Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna go over everything you need to know about JSON. JSON is one of the most essential concepts in web development, so it's crucial to know if you wanna be a web developer. We'll spend the first half of the video going over what JSON is, and we'll spend the last half of the video going over real life examples of JSON in our code, so make sure you stick around to the end. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. JSON is a data representation format, and it's used to communicate data across the web. What's that mean? Well, it means it's used all the time in APIs and servers in order to store and transfer information. If it wasn't already obvious by the name, JSON is based off of JavaScript, but it's actually very compatible with most modern programming languages. If you want to be a web developer or even work on backend development, it's essential that you know how JSON works. Without taking any more time, let me show you what JSON is actually made of. JSON files support six different types. The first type it supports is numbers. Numbers are pretty self-explanatory as JSON numbers can support positive and negative numbers as well as decimals. Any numeric value will be classified as a number. Next, we have Booleans. A Boolean is either true or false and JSON can represent both of these possible values. We also have strings, which are commonly seen in very many languages. Strings are always wrapped in quotations and represent characters from your keyboard. Another very important data type that we have is arrays, which are used to store collections of data instead of just one piece of data. For arrays, we always use square brackets and commas to separate out each individual piece of data. The last big data type it supports is objects. Objects are just collections of key value pairs. They're called objects in many languages like JavaScript, but you may know them as dictionaries if you're from Python. We always denote objects with curly brackets, and each entry should be wrapped in quotes followed by a colon, followed by that key's corresponding value, which can be any of the data types that we've discussed so far. The very last data type that we have is null. The null type only has one possible value, and that's null. It basically just means that nothing is there, and it's typically what we use if we still want to have a piece of data, but just have it be empty. And these are the only six types you're ever going to see in JSON format. If you have something besides one of these six inside of a JSON file, it is not valid JSON. So now that you know what the six data types are, let's look at an example of what JSON actually looks like. JSON can be used in a lot of different ways, but one of the most common ways is for JSON to be contained in its very own file. For right now, we'll just say I have a file called user.json. Let me walk you through how a JSON file might realistically look. I mentioned just a moment ago that one of the data types for JSON was an object. One of the most common ways in which you'll see JSON files represented is as one big object. To make an object, we need to use curly brackets. And then inside of these curly brackets, we can now specify key value pairs with any of the possible data types we just went over. To make a key, we need to use double quotes. And then inside of these, we can name our key. For example, let's say I want a key just called name. To give that key a corresponding value, we need to use a colon, which is just this double dot looking operator, and then we can specify the value that we want. If I want to make a value that represents my name, I should make it a string, which I can use double quotes to do that. And then inside, I will just type Austin. Real quick, I want to point out something very important. In JavaScript, these keys for your key value pairs don't need quotations. However, with JSON files, they do. This is an important point that a lot of people miss. What I've done so far is just created a JSON object that contains a single key value pair. The key is name, and then the value is Austin. This is completely valid JSON. However, most JSON files are more than just one liners. So let's make multiple key value pairs. If I wanna make multiple key value pairs, I wanna make sure that I separate out each entry with a comma. So after our first key value pair here, we'll just add in a comma and then go ahead and click enter. For our next key value pair, I'm gonna make a key called a subscriber count. And then I want to make a colon to specify the value. And right now the channel is sitting around 850 subs. So I'm gonna say subscriber count is equal to 850. 850 is a number and not a string. Therefore, we don't need any quotations around it. If we wanted to test out a Boolean, we could make another key. Let's just call it is YouTuber. And then for our value, we can just set it to true. Remember that Booleans only have two valid values, and that's true and false. So now that we've created a Boolean with true, we just created a valid Boolean field. Let's now look at the two slightly more complex data types, arrays and objects. We'll start with arrays first. Let's say I want another key, and this one will just be my list of friends. To specify an array, we need to use square brackets. Inside of these, I will just put the name of three of my friends. Let's say John, Sam, and we'll do Matthew. These are all names, so they are all represented as strings, hence why we use double quotes around each one. And we also wanna make sure that we use commas to separate out each entry. So this is what a valid JSON array would look like. Lastly, if we want to make an object, we can make another key just like normal, 
which for right now we can just call, let's say, physical attributes. If I can spell that right. And then we'll do a colon to specify the value. And then again, to specify an object, we need to use curly brackets. And then when you have nested objects like this in JSON, you typically want to indent to make the organization look a little bit nicer. Let's just give this object a few key value pairs. So for one, I'll say height, let's say six. We'll do weight 200. We'll say eyes brown. And then we will say, let's do a Boolean say is male. And that is equal to true. And this right here is a perfectly valid object in JSON. We've created a JSON object that now uses all the data types that we went over except for null. We have a few nested pieces here, like we have this array inside of this larger JSON object, and we also have this object inside of the larger JSON object as well. With JSON, you can do tons of nesting like this and have objects inside of objects inside of objects and so forth. Really quickly, my channel is nearing a thousand subscribers, so I'm trying to hit this milestone and I really appreciate you if you would subscribe or at least like the video as it would help me out tremendously. Anyways, back to the video. This is one very common way you're going to see JSON files represented as one large object. However, there's another very common application of JSON files, and it's a format you will likely see very often if you're getting into web development. This format is making the base data type an array instead of an object. To show you this method, I'll make another file. So I'm going to go here, new file. I'm just going to call it users.json. And then inside of here, instead of using curly brackets at the base level to signify an object, we're going to instead use square brackets to signify an array. Now with an array, we could have anything separated by commas. I could theoretically just have like one, two, three, four, five, and this would be a valid JSON array. However, if we're looking at real world applications, one of the most common methods for using arrays is to store an array of unnamed objects. For example, we could just get rid of these numbers here, and then I could add an object using curly brackets. And then inside of this object, let's add a few custom fields that I just made here super quick. Let me go ahead and fix the indentation here. So now we have an object that just has three fields. We have name, age, and profession. But because we have an array, we're often going to have multiple entries, meaning in our case, multiple objects. So I'm going to take this object here. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to specify a comma here to show that we're going to have another object in our array. And then I'm going to paste another object here. Let's just paste a third object. Now we have a valid JSON array of three objects. And just to make these fields unique, I'm gonna change these like this one. We'll just say like Jane, we'll do 25. Profession will be programmer. And then for this last object, we can say John, we'll say age 31. Profession can be, let's say databases. Now we have an array of three unique objects. One very important design principle that you may encounter is giving each object a unique ID. Notice that these objects here are unnamed objects because we don't name data that is stored inside of an array. Also, multiple people could share the same name, so often you'll have some unique ID for each object. So oftentimes you'll see at the very top of an object like an ID field, and for right now we're going to say like ID 1. For this one, we'll just do, we'll just do these 1, 2, 3. So we'll do ID 2 here, and then for this last one, we'll just go ahead and say ID is equal to 3. And make sure you're not forgetting the commas when you're adding these in. Now hopefully you have a solid understanding of how JSON files are formatted and how they look. The most important part about JSON though is how it's actually used in real life applications. So let's take a look at that for the last part of our video. Here I have a super basic template for an HTML page. And inside of this we have a script tag here where we can add some JavaScript to our page. So let's take this first JSON object that we created. I'm going to go ahead and just copy it all here and go back to our HTML page. And then inside of our script tag, let's make a new JavaScript variable. And let's say let my object equals, and then we're going to paste in our JSON object here. And then we're just going to fix the indentation here just to make it look a little bit nicer. Now that we have this JSON object stored in a variable, let's go down here and let's just add a console log statement so we can print it off to our console. So we'll just say console.log and then in here we'll pass in my object and see what happens. So if we go ahead and save this file here and open up our console here and go ahead and refresh the page, you can see that we now have in our console this object that we have created using the JSON format. If I click this arrow right here, we can expand our object to show all of its properties. What's nice about console logging JSON out is that it gets formatted nicely like this. And this is using the Google Chrome console, but pretty much every modern browser should show it similar to this. And as you can see, when we opened up the object, you can see that we have a list of all of our properties here. You can see that we have the friends array, which we can expand by pressing the arrow again. 
we got this is YouTuber, we got name, we got our physical attributes object, we get, which you can also expand here and so forth. So this is great. And this allows us to do all sorts of things now with our data. JavaScript, along with most other programming languages, uses dot notation for objects and square notation for arrays to select items. So for example, let's say I want to just select the name attribute of this object here. And that's actually super easy to do. All I have to do in the console.log is just say my object dot name like this. I can go ahead and save it, open up our console again, refresh the page. And now you can see it is just console logging awesome because that is the name property. If I wanted to print off the entire friends array, I could type dot friends, save it, go back to our console and refresh. And now we're printing off the friends array. If I wanted to select a specific friend, I can use square brackets to select the index I want. So if, for example, I want to select Sam, we can see that he's at index one. So I can go in here into our friends, do square brackets and then specify one and then go back to our console. And now we have printed off Sam. Inside of our my object object, we have another object called physical attributes. And if, for instance, I wanted to select a property from physical attributes, all we need to do is use the dot operator again to specify a selection. So for example, let's say I want to select the height from physical attributes. I first need to make sure we have my object selected because that's our base JSON object. And then inside of the object, we have the other object called physical attributes. And then inside of that, we have a field called height. So I will do dot height like this, go ahead and save it, refresh. And then you can see it is now printing off six because we specified height as six. This JSON format we're working with right now is one big JSON object. In the other example, when we had users.json, we had one big JSON array here. Let me show you how we would work with that kind of format in a real life scenario. So let's just go into our users.json file. Let's select all of it. I'm going to go ahead and copy it. And then instead of having our JSON object in here, let's paste in our JSON array. So we're going to paste it in like this and let's just rename it instead of my object. We'll say my array and then we'll just tab these in a little bit to get the organization looking a little bit better. And now in our console log, let's go ahead and console log this out here. So we'll say my array and let's see what happens. Save the page, go to our console, refresh. And you can see now it is printing off the array, which we can also expand by clicking this arrow. So it's pretty much the exact same idea as before. And for each one of our objects here, we can also expand the object by pressing the arrow for each one. And you can see it opens up the properties for each individual object. If I want to access a specific object, we can use our handy array square bracket notation. For example, let's say I want to select the second object or the object at index one. So to do that, all we need to do is specify square brackets and then let's select the object at index one. And if we go ahead and print that off, you can see it just selects that object. We can again combine this with the dot operator if we so choose. For example, if we want to grab the name of this object at index one, we could just add dot name here and then go back to our page and you can see it prints off Jane. One very last thing I want to mention before I close out the video is that many times when you're dealing with JSON, you may find that a JSON object or array gets misrepresented as a string. To simulate this, I can just add this um, backslash character right here and add it here to turn this into a string. And now if I were to go and just print off the array by itself and look at our console, you can see we're not getting that format anymore where we can click the arrows and open up the fields. It is just one massive string here. Now, if I try to use dot properties to access key value pairs or square brackets to access array indices, I'm going to get an error. But this is actually a very easy fix. All we need to do is call the json.parse function to turn a string into a valid JSON object or array. So for example, all I need to do to do that here is type JSON with all caps dot parse, and then we can pass in my array like this. Go ahead and save this page here refresh and you can see we are now back to our regular JSON object despite the fact that it started out as a string which means we now have the format of an actual JSON file where we can access our properties as we please. And that's going to officially wrap up this video. I really hope this is able to help give you a better understanding of what JSON is and how it's used in basic ways in JavaScript programs or just programs in general. I'm nearing a thousand subscribers on my channel so I'd really appreciate if you could subscribe or like the video to help me out. Take care everyone and have a great rest of your day.